Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Random Archaeology, episode eight, with myself, Professor Howard Williams. And me, Afnan Ezeldin. Hello again. Now we're back for another episode, but now we're going to do something different. Uh, we've talked a lot about archaeology degrees and careers in archaeology and research in archaeology um, at postgraduate level. And that was the last episode where I waffled on about my uh, my doctoral thesis back in the day. But this time we're going to start tackling, we're going into new territory. We're going to start tackling some new published research and evaluating it and mm. to, to do this we're going to both step outside our com comfort zone this is a broader archaeo death channel so we're going to do a mortuary archaeology um article that's just been published in a leading journal a peer-reviewed journal the journal in question being antiquity but it's going to be a subject that neither of us have really dealt with before in our research or our interests. Um, Afnan's got an archaeology degree, but she 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 never did South American archaeology. And I specialise and teach mortuary archaeology, but I've never, I occasionally use a, a few case studies in my teaching and my um, at master's and undergraduate level. And I read, you know, and listen at conferences to experts from the field talk about this stuff. But this is a new one for me. So I suppose the point of the random archaeology for us is to dip into some recent research that's published and see if we make sense of it. <laughs> and if we don't, that's not on us. That's on the researchers I'm blaming everything on them. Um, in other words, just to see what we can learn about this latest research. Is that the is that a spirit of what we're doing, Afnan? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I am on that page with you. So if it isn't, I guess we're both there. So sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, the page in question is from um, Antiquity, volume 96, and it's pages 387 to 403. And the article is by Jacob L. Bongers and colleagues, uh, Juliana gomez Mayer, Thomas K. Harper and Susanna Seidensticker. And the paper's called Assembling the Dead, Human Vertebrae on Posts in the Chincha Valley, Peru. And the first thing to say is that this is a obviously a multi-authored research paper about fieldwork that was conducted um, about eight, nine years ago. And it looks at and the abstract reads. I can just read out the abstract so people have a, a sense of it. It's it's uh, the post-mortem manipulation of human bodies is documented in many regions of the world, including South America. Recent archaeological fieldwork in the Chincha Valley, Peru, adds to this catalogue nearly 200 examples of the threading of human vertebrae onto reed posts. Here, the authors report on the dis distribution and composition of these, quote, vertebrae on posts, or VOPs as I'm going to call them, um, which are radiocarbon dated to the late horizon, AD 1400 to 1532, and colonial, AD 1532 to 1825, periods and notice this is a british published journal so a ad is used not the the american ce the authors argue that these modified remains represent a social process that reconstructed the dead in response to colonial period looting Final sentence of the abstract reads, this manipulation of human remains reflects protracted relationships between the living and the dead and the enduring social lives of human remains. Wow. So that's pretty standard yeah. academic speak that sort of condenses the argument into the abstract. And in standard antiquity style, it's written as if the editor's writing it rather than the author's, which I think is rather weird and freaky, like a boomy voice coming from outside the room, sort of talking about here we see two people doing this or here we see people walking along to the supermarket. It's it's a really strange antiquity thing. Usually antique uh, abstracts in research articles are written by the authors themselves about mm -hmm. their research but they they have this weird here the authors report as if it's the editor sitting <laughs> smoking a pipe in a big leather high back <laughs> chair going yes, let us bring to you stories from south america it's a very colonial attitude actually of antiquity if i can start off by bitching about that <laughs> but, but that's that's that that's by the by um let's talk about this paper then so this is from the chincha okay. valley of peru and it's about vertebrae on posts take it over afnan take us forward what do, what do we learn from this paper about this phenomenon of vertebrae on posts? Okay, well, 
Yeah, I mean, like, I, when I was reading it, so I was reading it on my commute um, to work, and it was actually really interesting. So I, and uh, yeah, basically, from what I gathered the first time I read it, first quick reading, what I gathered was that um, there are, they have found many open graves that have, um, I guess, included to bra on post, read posts, essentially. And some of them are in order, some of them aren't, some of them are a combination of um, different bodies. Some of them are mostly like, I mean, I'm kind of getting into what they found here, but like most of them are either of like only adults. There was a few that were both adult and children like mixed together. So it was, there's a really big question um, here about whether it was important about, is it the post itself? Like, is it the, the vertebra on the post that is important or is it the people who were of importance yes if that's from that's what i gathered yes. i'm not very articulate i'm um, sorry about that guys um but yeah <laughs> it's i thought it was a very interesting paper because it's been a really long time since i've read an archaeological paper and um there was a lot of reference to stuff that i either forgot or just wasn't aware of. Um, so what I actually wanted to say, what I found very interesting about this was um, the fact that they, the authors, they, the authors, relate it to like the colonial period mm. of looting. I thought that was really interesting because as I was reading it, I didn't really see why. So I don't like as a just me, there could have been so many other reasons and there's there's a really long time span um where they found things going on while well, this vertebra on post going on the vop yeah so i i was just really interested in why they would you know after reading their discussion i still didn't quite agree okay. i guess okay i, I mean it. that's 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 an interesting point because i think they do provide a bit more evidence to back that up but i think what's really interesting is they start off by saying why do people you know go back to bodies and yeah. do things with bones and they are right that across the world from christian medieval europe back into ancient you know far early farming societies and before yeah. we find evidence that people don't just cremate the body and dispose of the ashes or simply inhume the dead in the ground they they go back to bodies in various yeah. states of decomposition and manipulate the remains and sometimes that yeah. manipulation is secondary because they're trying to go for the artifacts they place with the dead and they're robbing or they are actually trying to retrieve them as a cultural so calling it grave robbing is often a loaded term we often talk about grave reopening because it's more neutral yeah. because sometimes people are going back and uh, taking out objects that are of cultural importance to the descendants of the person who's buried um yeah. but, but but in this case they're talking about much more of a specific set of manipulations yeah. and they do say yeah. Um, they are just for context, they do sort of give a, a good, good research tradition of just citing a few random other things that go on in South America. And they come at the end to some examples from Europe and they make a parallel with ancient Egypt. But yeah. they do say, for example, in South America, the Moche, we have evidence they're going back to graves and removing hands. We have evidence of the Wari, Nazcar and Wari cultures, much older than this period, um, where they took trophy heads. So that's more of a, a cultic, yeah. you know, defeated enemies displaying head thing. Um, there's also evidence of flayed skin used to make drums and skulls used for drinking cups. You know, in other words, there is crazy shit that goes on with the dead. And it's not just about South America. It's about, you know, globally, about people yeah. going back to remains, either of loved ones, to use a modern term, or to others, enemies, slaves, others, but using those remains in a cultural way. So they say there's all that backstory. And then they just posit a few reasons why they would, you know, get read poles and put vertebrae onto posts. And they said, and it, it's just a bit wishy-washy and they don't really explain this. It's a bit sort of, um, they're alluding to ideas in the broader academic literature that are almost factoids because they've been, you know, if you do anything with the dead beyond burying yeah. them, it's about ancestors. They don't use the word ancestors, which is really telling, but they say yeah. it's about territorial claims so your territorial yeah. claim through the dead which is a standard common discussion point right but they don't explain why people would say that they say 
it's to do with the social political order. Well, most yeah. things are, but what does that mean? They say maybe it was transporting the dead or trophy taking um, in some way. It was, was it about power and status? Again, they don't really specify what that means. Or is it about individuals? And that's the point, I think, where they mean, as you said, were these individuals of particular importance, like, like ancestors to the people doing the vertebrae poles? Um, but the one thing they're emphatic about is that the poles aren't created by looters themselves. Yeah. Um, they claim um, there was a lot. Of, um, there was a lot of looting going on. I mean, from from historical sources, and and and, and we'll come, I'll come back to whether why they think it wasn't looting uh, that did this, but they think looters created the conditions in which this happened. But 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 the point is, they they throw out lots of ideas, and a lot of research papers do this, but they leave the reader very unclear where those ideas are coming from. I mean, I could give a lecture on each of those ideas and the theoretical frameworks, but, you know, the reader's going, all right, so it's something to do with territory, you know, who knows, right? And then even at the end, they they just come back to some general points and say, oh, well, it's about the, the integrity of the body. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, but but the problem, the, the the crying out issue for me is that if you wanted to make a body look integral again, sticking the vertebrae on posts on, on a on a post doesn't make a body whole. Oh look, there's Jeremy. Look, he's all in pieces. I'll tell you what, I'll get a bit of reed and I'll ram it up between all his vertebrae. Then he'll look all right. Come on. <laughs> Um, so the question for me that was really not addressed is, are these posts simply the surviving fragment of a mm. broader attempt to create a sort of a wooden framework for the whole skeleton? Yeah, you know, were they tying with okay. with, you know, for the, so they're actually assembling entire skeletons, almost like medical skeletons. And it's only the vertebrae bits that survive in these. Or is this about the vertebrae? And they never addressed that point. And that drove me crazy because I was thinking, well, is this just the surviving? We find the vertebrae on the post. That's the bit that's likely yeah. survived. The skulls were the things that were important. The, the arms, you know, they, they were actually wrapping and creating humanoid like looking, you know, yeah. dummies, mummies, mannequins. You know, were they creating mannequins from the bones of the dead? And there's a tradition. They talk about the Chinchoro mummies, which are far, far older yeah. from Peru, that, that that have that a very, they say, a very strikingly similar tradition of, of mm. sort of recreating a bodily integrity from 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 part mummification, part augmentation. So I was a bit frustrated by that, you know, because we never learn whether it's the vertebrae on post that are the, the deal <laughs> or yeah. the vertebrae on post are just the bit that survives of of some kind of broader you know, framework. Yeah. So where am I going with? That? I suppose I'm saying I'm agree with you that it's not clear. I mean, mm. it's it, like all research, mortuary archaeology research. We can't get inside the motives and minds of past people, but they they flag up these possible motives of like it's to do with claiming territory. It's to do, and then they say, well, it's a response yeah. to colonialism and the colonial moment, which was tr traumatic in that that area. So, so I suppose the, the question is, um, and another side point, can I say, is that they do yes. make the decision in a British journal to include photographs of the human remains. Yeah. And and this, therefore, is another issue of, you know, because in American journals, if they publish this in, in American antiquity, they will not show any pictures of in, of, of Turtle Island, of in the Americas, of human remains. So I suppose we could have a conversation about what those images do. And I mean, for me, they help me to see exactly what type of evidence they've got. Yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking. Yeah. And while but they, I don't see any ethics statement about that at all in their paper um, and about why their decision, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but then equally. Uh, and so I do see that there are concerns about that that practice. I mean, I, I, we won't show the pictures in this blog, but um, that's one um, in, in this uh, podcast because, and that's one of the reasons it's, it, we're doing this without images because I don't want to have human remains on this channel, but mm -hmm. as much as possible. Um, but you know, there are. Um, and while you can say, well, we know what a skeleton looks like, Howard. Um, you know, this is a very distinctive practice where they've actually sort of like um like a like a kebab, she kebab. They they put all the the, yeah. the the bones onto a stick. You know, and we need you need to see what that looks like, and and the the images do that job. Um, so I suppose okay. I'm a bit I'm a little, little um I'm, I'm applauding them for doing that, but equally I think there should have been some kind of ethical statement about their justification for that. And in an American <laughs> journal, that would not fly. They wouldn't be allowed to do that. Anyway. <laughs> ben, I didn't know that you weren't allowed to do that in American journals. I'm actually kind of yeah, because 
I'm going to put myself right at the bottom of the, the barrel of archaeologists here and say I actually needed that. Um, I mean, I could kind of visualize what they were talking about, but like I, it was very useful for me to actually see it. And I was like, oh, OK, so that's what it looks like. Um, I thought it was very useful. Um, I think it's, but then, it's also important yeah. to anchor images with the articles. You, you can say, people always say to me, well, you can go on the internet, Howard, and find out what these things look like. And I say, well, yeah, but you can also go on the in internet and do a Google search for vertebrae on posts, and you'll find, wow, what else would you find? What other crazy things would you find that then would get latched onto this evidence, which can, which is why the internet is inherently unethical, because indigenous communities and their descendants may object to the images of human remains, but isn't it better to have authentic representations of their ancestors' uh, body parts and the practices that their ancestor did to their ancestors, rather than yeah. um, some BS Google search that pulls up all sorts of freak show, horror, clickbait, nasty stuff from all around the world yeah. and, and equates that with indigenous Peruvian peoples. So I suppose I see both sides. I'm not coming down strongly and viewers and listeners can can make their own minds up. But I'm just flagging up. This journal allows images of human remains. It's really helpful, yeah. but I think they don't really justify it in any particular regard. It's that's too below them to actually justify doing that which i think is poor okay. in my view so it's not that they yeah. i don't object to them showing the remains i object to the lack of any justification or context that i could find as to why yeah fair enough yeah i mean like i didn't even second guess it and i think that's why i actually really enjoy doing things like this with you because you point out things that i didn't even know or see or didn't even question um so yeah actually it's a big, like, oh, yeah. given how big an issue of it is in modern bioarchaeology, the fact that the authors and the editors don't actually pay attention to this is pretty shocking. But I appreciate it being there because I wouldn't have understand it, understood exactly what type of remains. And they actually annotate one of the yeah. photographs to show do, that yeah. the, the, what the posts are not. They're putting these vertebrae on posts, not in an exact anatomical order, but clearly they're dealing with disturbed bodies and people are trying to put the lumbar vertebra, the thoracic vertebra and the cervical vertebra in roughly the right order. So there seems to have been intent by these peoples in, 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 in doing this practice to represent the anatomy, even if they don't get it right, because they're not medically trained doctors or bioarchaeologists. Yeah. So, and I think that's, that therefore reveals something about the ancient practice you can't get from a description, in my view. And so I applaud them for doing it. Uh, I just don't think it's fully, fully um, justified for an international audience where this is now really sensitive um, as topic. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, like speaking of the pictures and like what you mentioned before, it was like, is it just the vertebra on post that are important or is it like the actual was it trying to configure like this whole body that just has like disappeared now and i think in one of the pictures on uh, page 400 i think if you can see it they yes, do actually okay. have um it's they they say well they talk about it as well but they're like they're, they're skulls that are attached so the vertebra the read up well, the vertebra on posts are inserted i guess yeah into the skull so it could be that are they trying to is the skull important like, is that is that the skull of an important person? Is are we trying to, yeah, recreate this human? Or, oh look, there's a skull there. There is a vertebra here. We don't know where any of the other skulls are because, like we said, it's not necessarily um, anatomical. So it, it is more than one person in some cases. So it is very interesting, and I do think that the pictures helped me <laughs> a yes. lot. And, they, and, and, and actually it's the pictures that reveal this association with skulls in at least one case where there is a skull on this and was that original is that you know yeah is this is this just a a, a fragment a, a part of the skeleton uh, of a bigger yeah. assemblage that's recreated post post burial for these individuals yeah so i i found it a very interesting paper and i i i i, I didn't feel they got to any explanation but the way they get to a particular association with the colonial era is through the radiocarbon dating and through the 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 claim that with the their estimates of the radiocarbon dating they can narrow it down chronologically okay so yeah. they they have um a diagram their figure eight which does link their um, radiocarbon range, their AMS dated ranges, which I don't know if they've done any further Bayesian analysis on this. I didn't read this section as well as I could have. Yeah, indeed. Indica yeah, they have. Okay, so 
but, but I won't, I'm not the expert to evaluate their radiocarbon dating um, methods, but they are claiming that the most likely date range in which the burial of those peoples whose remains are later uh, vertebrate mm -hmm. strung is 1520 to 1550, which is really tight, you know, and they're, therefore yeah. they're claiming that the harvesting of those bodies for stringing on posts was after the Spanish conquest and in 1550 to 1590, and therefore likely to be after the craze of Spanish looting that took place in the valley that's documented historically. So they are trying to claim that this isn't just a broad, long-lived cultural practice, that this stringing yeah. of vertebrae is a direct response to ransacking and looting of local tombs by colonists in that immediate post-conquest period. Now, I'm not, I don't know enough about the his, the, the time scale and the, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm always sketch, I'm skeptical of people claiming very tight, historically linked causalities in the archaeological record. So I, I, I'm with you on that, Afnan. I suppose my point yeah. would be that, um, and they've got the read post dating is later than the vertebrae themselves. So they can see there's, there's certainly a time lag between the post and the, you know, the, the, the original bodies. But, yeah. you know, it's still it's still not clear why people would do that if there is, is it a way of when they say response, social response to are they saying that local people are going back to these ransack sites and trying to literally do what archaeologists do in crime scenes, trying to find the identities of their dead loved ones that have been destroyed mm -hmm. and pull them together and the read posts are a way of doing that. Or, you know, are they entertaining the possibility there was a longer tradition of doing that, but they just had to do more of it because the bodies had been so disturbed? I don't know. There's a lot of questions yeah. there. But then they do write so much on their very tight narrative of uh, 16th century uh, sequence. So, you know, that then does ask, the, you know, your question is a legitimate one. How much are their underpinning assumptions about how they're going to interpret the dates, then circle back to their the answer sure, they yeah. wanted to get. <laughs> and this is what we have to worry about with circular arguments. So I'm, I'm not going to call on that because I don't know enough about their, their data and something. But I think these are the kinds of critical questions you're rightly raising because, I, I, you know, and you could, you know, it does affect, you know, the assumptions you're making about the dates and how you're going to interpret them from samples. If you're going, well, that doesn't work because it's the wrong date. And we saw this, the same kind of arguments we had about this with um, the Viking mass grave at Repton is that the marine reservoir mm -hmm. effect was proven and does push the dates back from the 7th, 8th century into the 9th century for that mass burial. Therefore, the mass burial does seem to be associated with the Viking mass burial, um, the Viking winter army and its presence there, the great heathen army, sorry, the great heathen army. Um, but that doesn't necessarily prove what, why they did that, why they did treat those human remains in that way. And so, yeah, yeah. we've got to be, I think we've got to be very cautious that they're not creating too simplistic a response to colonial looting. Um, yeah. and, and they're not... And because one of the other crying out issues is they say they make this point at the end about the wow, there's striking similarities to the Chinchorro mummy phenomenon, which is thousands of years older. So they actually say critically, this practice is also not entirely without precedent, as it resembles an early Chinchorro 10,000 to 4,000 Cal B P, in other words, roughly 8 to 2000 BC procedure observed on the coast of the Atacama Desert, maintaining the rigidity of the mummified individual's trunk by threading yeah. a wooden stick into vertebrae via the spinal canal. The authors note that the stick functioned as an anchor for the head and that the vertebrae were not always in anatomical order, suggesting that external form and appearance was more important than anatomical position, as you'd expect. In other words, they're saying there is indigenous precedent to this from thousands of years yeah. before. And that begs really interesting questions they refuse to go into about well maybe these the these um the these people in the Chincha Valley are had access to knowledge, deep time knowledge, or were, had actually accessed old tombs from other parts of Peru, yeah. had knowledge of that. And that buys into the whole point that one of the things I didn't really get my head around is that some of these remains aren't local. So some of these people seem to have been coming from elsewhere. So I yeah. I I do wonder whether there's there's something a, a little bit, uh, there's there's more to be spun out than a 5,000 word research article can tell us. So I feel I want to learn more, so much more about the, mm. the, the Peruvian North Coast. It says the samples are genetically most similar 
to ancient Amada peoples from the northern Peruvian coast. In other words, that's the, I think that's the area of the Chincharos. So you have, I'm not saying, you know, there's something else going on. So they say they concede further genetic and stable isotopes uh, analyses, however, are needed to understand the origins and identities of individuals selected for this practice. So, so one level they yeah. want it to be all about looting and people going back to their local tombs to restore the integrity of the dead. But also they're not doing it for everyone and they seem to be doing it to people that are not local anyway. So I, 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 this is this this leaves me my head buzzing with questions. I t I totally agree with you because like I actually I picked up on that as well what you said it's like oh so they did have this kind of um, I'm gonna say phenomenon it's not a phenomenon this yeah. thing that they did um, and it was a really really long time ago I was like why are they bringing it back now like it's been yeah. such a long time um, but I think I'm with you in that because we, I don't know much or anything for that matter about this kind of area and about this topic. It's very difficult for me. Maybe I have lots of questions because they're assuming that I have knowledge that I just don't have. I think that's true of any of these research papers. And, yeah. you know, that's why they have bibliographies so we can go and explore more. And in that regard, there is supplementary material that's online and that you can read about. And there's also a, a, a substantial bibliography with links to various um, various um, uh, other articles, many of them behind the paywall, but some of them not to to learn more about this. This a fascinating um Peruvian culture and their if there is their response to colonial looting, which at least seems to be in part the case, whether it's building on a longer tradition of reconstructing the dead of specific individuals, um, you know, it, it 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 allows you to follow this up. But but for me, what was really interesting is um, both this was a really strong article I found, but also it did have a few. It dabbled in a few concepts and ideas. It didn't justify, including issues of bodily integrity. Without just without yes. properly arguing whether this was like the Chinchorro mummies, an act of rebuilding the whole body, and we've only got the vertebrae, or it was actually just about the vertebrae, and there's something special about the vertebrae. And if it was the latter, what was it about the vertebrae that was so important that they needed to? Mm -hmm. And what was it about the reeds? Were the reeds just the only available small sticks? Did they did they? Is this about just reassembling the dead in the tomb, or was this about processing? holding the dead on high to make them almost into performers within processions you know those kind yeah. of things they didn't i mean maybe that's too speculative but they could have i think they raised something all these could have been used in in in, in uh, some kind of ritual but they don't we don't know that because you can do the same practice and have it quietly and pri pri privately done behind closed doors or within the tombs or are they actually taking the dead back to settlements and then doing elaborate rituals to re bring the spirits back to these desecrated remains and then taking them back to their tombs i mean that's the type of question that i would like to learn more about you know is there any reasonably in, you know secure context where proper detailed archaeological excavations can be done to reveal evidence of the sequence of what's going on and are these remains from those tombs originally or not now, that's the kind of thing i'd love to find out more about yeah, I mean, I'm totally with you because I mean, like they do mention that like after they put the reeds on posts or the, the vertebra through the reeds, um, the reeds on post, not, yeah. not at all, <laughs> the vertebra on post. Yeah. And um, they cover them in textiles. Of course, so, I forgot to, we forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So they've covered them in textile wrapping, um, which means that so this uh, this is something else that I was like, oh, OK, so you're putting them in what seems to be an order or maybe what is aesthetically what you feel to be in order, but then you're covering it up. So I'm like, oh, it must not be aesthetically because you're covering it up anyway. So it might not matter what order it's in, or is it just, because I'm trying to think if, I mean, of course I'm not an ancient being, but like if I was, what would I do? And it's like, okay, well this bit, this bit fits with this bit. I'll just put it in as it fits. It doesn't matter because I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm going to try and put it in it. It's like a jigsaw. So like in my mind, I was like, OK, well, maybe that's why. But like, yeah, it was just very interesting. So why does the anatomical, why does it matter if it's covered up? And if, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have lots of questions I just <laughs> about really, things. That... I mean, I know the modern practice of um, wiring skeletons together. Right? I understand mm -hmm. And you look at a modern wired skeleton, whether it's actually real human bones or it's a, a, a model, you know, um, cast. Mm. And you realize that if you're doing that with traditional materials, pre-metal or at least pre, 
you know, modern technology. It's really, and we've seen this in discussions of this about it from, from other contexts in Neolithic Europe and so on. It's really difficult to keep a skeleton jangling together. Uh, and, and what <laughs> materials would they have used? And so what I'd be really interested to find out is while they may have let the toe and hand bones go, how did they yeah. keep the main long main main limb bones and the rib cage and the clavicles in particular mm. and the scapula? I mean, did they bother with those or is it just having a, a bunch of vertebrae and a skull damning dangi put a hat on the skull now, we don't know what was going on here and that's what I suppose I, yeah. I I was left I was left hanging with this paper I didn't get a sense of and to be fair they ha they can't push beyond the evidence they have um, yeah, of course. but but um equally I suppose I was craving more context and rather than just quote Robert Hertz and say death is a transition this is a process of making the dead into something new, which can apply to almost every funerary ritual yeah. across the world, whether you're immediately taking the body to a cemetery or you're doing something else with them. You know, Robert Hertz is wheeled out like a mummy himself to work, do that work of saying, ah, oh, death is a transition. I've used it myself in my own work, as we talked about last time in terms of thinking about mm -hmm. cremation as a process of transition of rebuilding a body for the dead. But that still doesn't tell us why those pots were used for cremate, the cremated dead in early Anglo-Saxon England. It still doesn't explain why they're wrapping up um, vertebrae in this fashion and where they're yeah. getting this tradition from. Because if it's all response to the Spanish conquest and the loot, the ransacking and looting and mm. the massive, I know it has to be said, the massive estimated population collapse, they're estimating from 30,000 in the valley down to around one, under 1,000 valley in a 50 mm. year period. I mean, that is that is what genocide looks like. I mean, that's what yeah. we're looking at. We're looking at mass population. I mean, I don't know exactly how they've estimated those figures, but that we're talking about a society in in free fall because of yeah. the effects of the dis the diseases and the violence and the socioeconomic dislocation caused by the Spanish conquest. So, you know, if that's so, it's all about that, where they're getting these ideas from. And it sounds like there's a discussion to be had about them accessing either knowledge or traditions that were already there and em emphasizing yeah. them. And I don't think they, sorry, yes, my babbling on there, but I, I think no, that no, no. there's some interesting ideas there that need to be there teased is. out further. Here's totally, me talking about yeah. a period and region I know nothing about, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's just is what mortuary archaeology is about. It's sort of discussing through these questions. I, I wonder if the authors will listen to this and get get very angry that we've got it all wrong. <laughs> but uh... possibly. very, very possibly. <laughs> well, I mean, I do think the thing is, I'm you have a lot more experience with mortuary archaeology than I do, and I think that while this paper is for academics, I do think that um, it is important to raise questions because I think sometimes. Um, when you are an academic or when you even know about a period, it's very easy to glance over things that you can assume. And then if you give it to like a naked eye, like someone very new, um, they're like, oh, but I don't understand this. And it's something that you didn't even think of. So I do think it is interesting to kind of just speculate, even if we are wrong. Um, it's always, you know, just fun. Um, but what I thought was interesting about what you were saying was like, well, I guess well, well, what they were saying, too, was just their connection with it to the Spanish conquest. I didn't understand why. Because they talk about it, because you said you did. You said you kind of got, you understood. Like, I got they where did. they were coming from with that argument, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if I fully, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, like, of course, I can, I can see it. I mean, I can see it, like, I guess. But it's like from what I gathered, and this is what I gathered from when I read it. So the colonial people, the Spanish conquest happened. People came in, the Spanish came in. They started like rummaging through people's burials, taking stuff um, that they didn't, you know, that they yeah. wanted or what they didn't. And basically after that, um, they, the, the local people felt, and I'm going to put it in the most simple, non-academic yeah. way, they were like, you guys have foreign luggies. I do not want those in my burial. So yeah. then they went back into the burial and they were like, I'm going to fix this. And they started putting vertebra on posts. They started like putting things together and kind of fixing, cleaning up the place. That's kind of what I gathered. But what I didn't understand was why that would play such a big part. Because earlier in the article, they talk about how they was there was looting of like indigenous graves it was happening mm. 
anyway. But then we don't see that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm. I'm well, that's, that's 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 an interesting thing because so much of this is. My understanding, I, mean, I don't know much about, about this, this particular area, but what, I'm, what I would say is my understanding is we're looking at coastal societies that were integrated into the Incan Empire mm. during the 15th century. In the early 16th century, we see a fundamental dislocation again and both direct and indirect impacts of the, the, the Spanish conquistadores presence is yeah. um, the breakup of existing trade and exchange relationships. These communities were heavily uh, integrated and reliant on each other. There's new diseases and yeah. the direct transporting and massacring of people. So there's all sorts of different things going on. I don't, I think it depends on where you are in that Peruvian coastline, depends yeah. on how much each of those things is going on. But I can't give you a, 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 a detailed review of that. But this is a time of yeah. fundamental dislocation. And the narrative they are presenting is exactly, you're exactly right. What they're okay. saying is the local people have had their tombs ransacked either by other local people, neighboring indigenous people or the Spanish themselves, which, you know, let's not pretend it's such a simplistic us and them. You know, the opportunity, yeah. times of crisis are times when people steal shit. This is what of happens course. in, this is what happens across the world. Looting is integral to wartime. Looting is integral to social, is law breakdown. Um, the breakdown mm. of law and order leads to looting and it, it will be done by anyone who's desperate or needs to do so. And tombs are a resource, if you want to see it that way, that can that are protected in normal times. But when that, those 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 uh, mores, those expectations break down, looting can happen. So we don't know who's doing the looting, but the colonial moment is causing all that dislocation. It's not necessarily just the Spanish. But then yeah. the colonial period looting is for what? Well, presumably they're looting to um, access the potential grave goods that are being placed with the dead. And they're talking about these are gold and silver trading peoples. So the Spanish were looking at that. And we also know how, no matter how small the returns, ransacking on a massive scale can take place just to acquire the smallest number of objects. So don't yeah. don't be and and the, but the other thing that isn't properly made clear but is is said in the article is that the types of tombs we're dealing with are very easily accessible. They are multiple occupancy yeah. funerary deposit repositories in many cases, not all cases. Yeah. The chulpas. Um, so these are and there's some of the photographs of them. So these are a culture where the dead are are nearby, accessible, visible, remembered, and therefore they're not hidden away, and therefore yeah. it's very easy for for people to utilize this moment to access those tombs but the, okay, you know, yes. the argument though the, the argument then is well they're doing this to restore that to bring the dead back but th there's no idea of the time scale whether this was people who remembered the dead person or as people you know who are creating new identities new names new stories yeah. in this time of crisis whether they're people from elsewhere that are being remembered and treated differently for particular reasons so I, I think mm. there's a load of issues there that need to be, but I, you know, with it. But then, to be fair to the authors, this is only a 5K paper. Yeah. And and another point, this is a to to um um to reflect on the authors, um to be to defend the authors. Um, none of these journals are using their supplementary data effectively. They have the opportunity now to provide a popular narrative, a press release. As part of the supplementary yeah. data, they have the, the in these online articles, they have the ability to use the supplementary data to provide a, a, a review aimed at school kids, a review in Spanish aimed at local communities, um, um, a justification of human remains representation and treatment. And yeah. so I think a lot of these articles really have to up their game in terms of how they use online supplementary material to mm -hmm. ethically and helpfully provide summaries and explanations of some of these questions and another fe feature that may come in future with these online articles is q a sections so after yeah. a year uh, they have an open q a for a year so people like you students and uh, you know interested parties can drop their questions in and then the researcher goes back after a year or 18 months and actually spends a session answering these questions um, yes. You know, and I've seen this happen. So I'm, I'm, this, this is going to make uh, the author of Antiquity sweat a bit by me saying this. But I think we've got to get away from this fixed publication point narrative that goes to a press release. Everyone circulates it online and goes, oh, well, mm -hmm. that's that piece of research. Let's move on. The potential for these online platforms is that they can be really places where questions and answers can happen. Accusations of mis of, of ethical misconduct. We're not saying in this case, I'm just saying could be raised. Indigenous communities yeah. might have a voice. 
where yeah. people might actually learn stuff and build on these articles. Um, so um, this is nothing specifically criticizing the individuals of this research paper, as I hope they understand. This is more about reflecting on on, on broader practices that could help mm. make these research articles more ethical and educational. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree. And yeah, of course, I think that the authors for this article, I actually um, I, I think they did a really it was really it was very interesting and they have a lot of really good evidence and i think they lay out the evidence in a very really nice it's very easy to follow it's very um you know yes. i guess it's a top presentation yeah yeah really well done um and i think i so i uh, i'm just gonna say like it the discussion it was actually quite short yeah um, it was quite a short discussion. So I think like that's totally fine. Like the, the point of the article was here is the evidence. This is what we found. And like, this is what that's pretty standard for antiquity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like I, I like that because I mean, um, they weren't trying. I mean, I guess to a point they weren't trying to sway your opinion, but you're totally right in how these online sources can really be an opening. And I like what you said about the indigenous people, because this is their history and it is important to not just them, but to the area itself. Um, yeah. You know, like it has so much, um, well, just so much background that can be used and really people can shed light on this, like if yeah. they know about it and that aren't archaeologists. So I do think that would, that is really the, the way to go. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I like that. That was awesome, actually. Nice point. So okay. one other thing that I wanted to ask you, Afnan, as an Egyptian, mm. is is oh, yeah. how these international peer-reviewed academic articles frame their case study in relation to international mortuary yeah. archaeology. And yet here again, we have Egypt gets, yeah. gets evoked um, near the end of the paper. And I, I don't I don't know how that fitted in. What did you think about that? Yeah, like, I mean, like we said before, like, the discussion was quite short um, in itself. And I, I mean, like, I think it's not a personal thing about me being Egyptian, but I do feel like a lot of papers, because there's so much going on in Egypt and there is so much evidence found in, in ancient Egypt and just in the history of Egypt, that it's very easy to pick and choose the kind of evidence that you want to use in, like, comparisons. For this paper, I felt like it... They're very unrelated, I felt, as, um, you know, South America, like you have South America and then Egypt's like basically on the other side of the world. Maybe they had some kind of connection. I really don't know. I did think it was out of place. And I think, I don't know, it was like a 200, 200 word kind of ending yeah. to their discussion. And I mean, it's fine. And I'm really glad that they're trying to, I mean, they being the authors, I'm happy that they're trying to include an international, like, F, you know, effect of mortuary archaeology and how this can work. But I definitely do think it needs more than 200 words and it shouldn't be a random slap, slap it in at the end of the yeah. discussion just before the conclusion. I don't know. What did you I, think? I think this is, this is almost, I mean, they, they, they try to make the point here that, it shows that there are other cultures are interested in wholeness of dead bodies. Mm. And, but then they say, while we exercise caution in drawing this cross-cultural comparison, the similarities between the Andean, Andean and Egyptian case, cases are striking, as they reveal that post-mortem body manip manipulation was among the most possible, well, the possible responses to grave looting. OK, yeah. right. But the problem with making those parallels for me is twofold. Firstly, you sound like a it's, it's hyper colonial and making, <laughs> you know, why aren't you making a comparison with um, the modern anatomical collections or yeah. why are you making co context to Christian uh, European remains? And, yeah. and and the problem is it, it opens the door to the crazies who can't read suddenly going, oh, ancient aliens, they're all doing the same things. Not only do they all have pyramids, even though there's no pyramids yeah. in the they are all got pyramids, you know, it's a kind of yeah. bananas, but they're all doing the same thing to the dead. And I think it's almost it's not their fault, but I think the authors are pressured into doing this kind of cross-cultural parallel when you mm -hmm. didn't freaking need it. Um, if you're making yeah. a, if they, because they, they, it's not as if they ever get to a point here and say, as in Ptolemaic and Roman period yeah. Egypt, 
and this shows something specific about one response to but they, no they don't they just go oh you know um it's like by the way by the way this happened in egypt and it's like well great lots of looting like yeah go. lots of looting happened in egypt and lots of people um you know um are, are, are holding bodies together i don't know it didn't quite play yeah and i think it's all too abbreviated they should have just kept it out in my opinion yeah so maybe i think you're and the yeah it's almost like let's get egypt in somehow is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, like I said, and I think that you'd agree in that, like, they might have felt pressured or like, I think it's nice. And it's important to kind of have international references. Look, it is happening in other places. I completely agree. But yeah, maybe some, some more, like, connection throughout the article for them to, for this to then be relevant, right at the end of their discussion, I think yeah. would have been fine. Um, yeah. But it felt very random as i was reading it i was like oh egypt i was like oh 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 mm. <laughs> so yeah that was my opinion on that <laughs> fair enough well i don't have anything else to say on this one and i was going to wrap up by simply saying that my the youtube channel we're on has now got up to 763 subscribers so do subscribe if anyone out there isn't already a subscriber of archaeo death on youtube um and um also while we're i don't think you're on tiktok but i'm on tiktok and i've got quite a boost in followers i'm up to 16,600 followers on 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 tiktok so that's gone a bit crazy um um I, this is a very different kind of content and this is not for tiktok because this is conversations about new research and if this if people like this tell us and we'll try to do more of them um because and and, and that's the whole point is going into different research papers that neither of us has really uh, ex explored before but people might want to know about and in this case yeah. vertebrae on posts <laughs> or or <laughs> you know sounds like sounds like a sort of horror movie thing and and i think that's the other point we should emphasize is that we've tried to talk about this in a way that's responsible too and not this kind of creepy gory spooky stuff that gets peddled out on social media about anything to do with the human dead um which yeah. is just is is something i've really criticized and and, and afnan's heard me rant about many times <laughs> before that every time you talk about human remains you have to go you know these stupid oh it's it drives me crazy um, but, you know, we are trying to talk about this in a, like adults about topics yep. that matter, not only for the, the heritage of, the, of Peru, but also for global archaeology. And, uh, and particularly yeah. looking at the human dead is an important and, and, and valuable resource, but something we have to do in a very, very respectful and uh, yep. responsible way. Absolutely. Yeah. And I totally agree. I think it's important that um, I, mean, I guess you're in a position where you can do this. It's to shed light on new information about human remains. And it isn't all gory and spooky and crazy. You know, yeah. like sometimes you need to be respectful. It, they are, they were people. They are people. Um, and we should respect not only them as the dead, but, you know, their, I guess, the now people who are surviving their, their kids. What, what would you even call that? Our descendant communities. Descendant or, communities. That's what I would say. <laughs> Um, thank you yeah. no 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 it's it, these terminologies are very f carefully framed and uh to to make the right point uh, i think uh, but there's been some really i mean just for context if you worry why if li listeners are worried why we're talking about ethics so much is not only because there's a been a massive a mass movement over the last 50 years towards paying careful respect to indigenous cultures and their remains given this legacy of colonialism but also to restitution and repatriation uh, but decolonization isn't just simply about land claims and about uh, returning cultural remains that are owed to these people it is also about yeah. how we write and talk about those uh, remains and I said so that's that's I think is, is is an important thing I mean so I mean you could say we shouldn't be talking about them at all because we should be only uh, only talking in you know Anyway, but but I think these things, <laughs> these, these issues do 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 touch on all our work on a global scale. So it's really fun stuff. It is absolutely interesting and stuff. Fun, fun, interesting. Is. Yeah, fun and interesting. Yeah, definitely interesting. I think it's quite fun. Should we do another one of these then, Afnan? Should we do another one? In t yeah, I want to. It's 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 really nice going back and actually reading archaeological papers. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> Very nostalgic. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, it's interesting. So, yeah, thank you very much. And I hope that um, all of the listeners, I hope that you enjoyed hearing something new, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, t take care for now, everybody. And we'll be back with another yeah. Let's Talk Random Archaeology very soon. Yeah.
see you.